Good day, everyone. I'm Richard, and this is my wife, Mary. Hi. We've lived in this house for 25 years. It was built in 1930 on land that was originally fields of Lions Farm. And when we, I got my life insurances out when I became 60 in 2008, I, we suddenly thought we could do something with this house to actually reduce its carbon emissions and with the land around it to provide a haven for our wildlife extinction that's happening to try and avert that. So those two themes sort of run through our, our lives. The front garden was is concrete underneath and I think the original owners were going to put some paving for a car. We don't have a car but shingles down and we just let the, whatever wildflowers grow, grow. <clears throat> and surprising what's come up. We've got the valerian here, we've got a lovely uh, teasel growing and there were the little tiny vipers, vipers. bugloss which has gorgeous blue flowers and the bees really love it. But um, in theory we would we would cut the central area down to um, but people still tend to park on the road anyway, so... Um, it's, it's very good, because we've got a, <coughs> a drop curve, people respect this space and don't yeah. park outside our home. Yeah. Lovely. So, and I can't bear to cut it down, so... We've got the trees here, trees are so good for wildlife. There's a lovely white beam on one side, which is actually on the neighbour's land. The flowers are out at the moment, bees everywhere on it. And then on the left we've got a hawthorn, which is one of them most uh, useful trees for wildlife and the flowers are over on that one now. So we try to do community spirit as well, we've got a little notice board which we talk about things that are going on, we're advertising the new ethical supermarket history at the moment and we've got a little bowl which is used by dogs, cats and foxes and probably mice as well for all we know. <laughs> So we've also got the rainwater system, rainwater coming down from the roofs, goes into this lovely old uh, barrel water butt, and then down the overflow, down into a little pond made from a, an old uh, water system. system there. So we, irises are just about to come out on there. Frogs seem to find anywhere to sort of find and then down it goes into another smaller pond that you can't see and then it, it soaks away. We encourage people to come by bike so we have a bike rail. A mention for this, this seat made locally out of oak from the uh, the great storm what was it 1987 I believe and I'm, I'm hoping I'll manage to just I fancy writing on it rest a while it's in our front garden who knows, somebody might find it just what they need. And we enjoy sitting out here sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a lovely window cleaner who comes on his bike with his trolley, his trailer behind with his ladder. So he's here today. These houses were one of the first built with cavity walls. So we had the cavities filled as the first step with some lovely insulation, um, which is made of 84% recycled glass bottles. Um, and that was pumped in. Not, not uh, itchy at all. But there's, there's the stuff there. It's just, just, just full. It looks like wool, but it's actually glass wool. Huh? Oh, so it's not plastic glass, is it? It's no, no, it's glass I mean, glass. Plastic glass. <laughs> <laughs> so it's nice, it hasn't got the uh, yeah. um, fossil fuel. And then connection. we had to insulate the walls. Now, we didn't want to insulate on the front of the walls because we didn't want to spoil this mock Georgian, is it? Tudor. Tudor, mock Tudor. Tudor. 
uh, wood finish there so we've had to do it on the inside at the front uh, for the windows we eventually decided on the green building company windows they're wood they're made in Bolton with FSC timber and they're triple glazed with an argon filled and they've got a very good insulation value so the the wood some of the wood is not actually original wood it's what they call laminated that's a picture of the sill there and you can see the laminated wood and the it's painted with a very eco friendly paint on the outside which we have to redo every four to five years to uh, keep the guarantee and keep them healthy and we do that with just quick rub down and one coat of eco-friendly paint. I like the way he says we. <laughs> <laughs> and it was done last um, October, so they're looking quite good. We didn't want to spoil the original features of the door and side window, so we had it taken off and some stripping, weather stripping put in, put in right there around to give it more insulation. And the side window we didn't want to spoil, so what we did we use one of the old window casements as a sort of a double glaze unit and that's all insulated, um, weather stripped as well. So, okay. Yeah, these are the lovely windows that just open and close very carefully. And what happens here is the insulation is about uh, 60 millimeter on the inside. It's, it's wood fiber insulation. And it's returned down the side, even though these are terrace houses, to stop any heat, heat leak to next door, should they be a, have an empty house. And you can see it's returned to there because that's the extra thickness of the insulation showing up. We were impressed on the builder that we didn't want any waste, so all the skirtings were taken off and put back again. And the window boards, because now you've had an extra 60 millimeter, he actually put in a, a piece of wood at the back, 60 millimeter to make up the difference. Otherwise it's the same window board. We use the roof space for all our needs and it's got a lovely wooden ladder that just comes down very easily. Then we switch on the light and hang that back up and we'll go up and see what's in the roof space. Yep. So the whole of the ceiling is insulated with 300 millimetre of warm cell which is recycled newspaper insulation and it's all loose, it's very nice to touch, not itchy and uh, you're supposed to sort of sometimes sort of, you know, do a bit of stirring to make sure it doesn't get too flat. And because we wanted to use the roof space, we actually put this all the way over and then had joists put that way and that way, and then put flooring on top of all the insulation. Recycled flooring, of course, as, as you can see here. And, and then we got our, um, what it's called now? <laughs> solar inverter. Solar inverter. We got our solar inverter there. Uh, some people have them, all the instructions downstairs, but we don't have any wire-free stuff. It's all hardwired because we didn't want to have any of the electromagnetic um, uh, uh, complications because we, we've got a friend who can't come into people's houses because of it, and we know it doesn't do us any good. So there she is, nice little box of tricks. So if you come into the bathroom, you can see our water reuse, the grey water reuse. We have a bath once a week, not, not a very full one. Both of us together, the same water, but the water can then be used to flush the toilet. We don't always put flowers in it, just for you. But also we bucket out from downstairs in this lovely stainless steel bucket, any of the water that we use and, and flush the toilet. And so, very, very seldom do we actually have to use the mains flush, which I think is very important because producing water of a potable quality actually creates a lot of energy use as well as water waste. And, and also the, when it is um, 
put down the drains as well there's a lot of energy use when it gets to the water work so we try not to except for the toilet we don't actually put anything else down the drains we try and reuse it so there's our living room and the central heating usually goes at 16 degrees uh, we can put it up if we get a bit cool and in the winter when we're sitting down we can actually light a wood fire which just take this is a homemade little thing to actually lock it up and we're not in use with a lovely sun on it and we just get odd bits of wood from pe other people often that just chop things out to have a bit of coziness also we you can have electricity as well in the other room we've got a fairly old-fashioned electric fire with the old uh, pretend coal on it which we can put on We try to expose and use the original flooring where we can. So in the bathroom, in the kitchen, this is the original floorboards. They weren't tumbled and grooved, so we've had to sort of put sealant in between. And what I, what I use is very simple. It was this paper mashed up together with, uh, with glue and just poked in. And then we seal it over with uh, some lovely eco-friendly sealant now and then. So this is the nerve centre of our water recycling. Everything we use from the sink, from the washing machine, from the water softener and from the bath is collected up and reused either on the garden or down the toilet depending on, on what we need. Uh, the water softener has obviously got salt in it so they actually go into the two black buckets there so we know we can only use those down the toilet. And then we've got rainwater from the gutters, comes down into the rainwater butt, and if that gets too full up, it goes into the second one. But also, we've got quite an ingenious system. From the bottom of this, we can turn that on, and that's a garden hose. It goes all the way down the garden and feeds our ponds down the bottom of the garden there. So this wood store here was made by me completely from recycled materials. You've got wood down here for the fire, and in the top half, which is accessed quite easily when you just lift the lid, is wood that one day will be reused. It's all there, waiting for the next project. So here is our back wall, which we insulated on the outside, and this is what it actually is. It uh, starts off with wood fibre insulation and then you've got lime mender, some reinforcement put in, a second coat and then the final coat can be coloured and we, we chose that this colour because we saw it blended in with nature quite well. It's actually called KISS, I don't know whether that has any relevance or not. But, uh, um, and the actual thickness, the actual thickness of the wood fibre insulation is 80 millimetre. There's a sample of it. It's it's tongued and grooved at the joints, so you don't get any, any wastage. And it's fixed into the wall with screws with some plastic. Unfortunately, we sometimes have to use plastic uh, ins insulation there to stop the cold bridge. But, uh... So this is our house terrace. It's concrete slabs, but unlike most people, we don't seal them in. We let the wildflowers as we call them, and they're not weeds, they're only weeds that are in the wrong place, grow up in the joints. And it's, we get some lovely plantains. I mean, these are so beautiful and they're so good for bees as well, all the, the flowers and the seeds. We've got a little kitchen garden here with all our herbs that we use. We've got the compost bin here, very chatty and wormy very handy. It's sort of permaculture principles really. You have everything that you need a lot close to you. So, And anything that grows we think well that's fine. You've, you've started growing. Uh, this herbalist bush grew right in the cracks of the, of the paving down there. <laughs> but uh, he seems to be doing alright. He's lifting a paving but fine that's okay. Uh, and this here this grows every year again in a crack of the paving and uh, that's lovely and then we've got the apple trees this is uh, Ellison's orange apple 
which it's flowering or it's uh, it's propagation day it's supposed to be the 13th of may it was a bit early this year i think which is quite good because it's my wife's birthday so i thought it was lovely uh, and of course we feed the birds we've got a lovely little feeder up here which uh everything comes to we put stuff out on the ground as well and this morning i put a lot out for the birds but the little fox cub came and finished it all off so i'll have to put some more down that's life the bees are on the barrage doing their <laughs> thing and we'll take you on a, a little tour of the garden and what we call the uh, the wildlife retreat further over We've got here a lovely scarecrow, which isn't a scarecrow. <laughs> That's Hannah Harrow from Where's the Rummage Days. So and got... she's not to scare the rooks, she's promised. And there's a little container of water at one end and a coconut with bird food the other end. <laughs> and actually they were using it within a couple of hours of it going up. So I was really quite thrilled that they looked on it as a source of nourishment rather than scary. <laughs> we had... Uh, lovely young lady who was doing a permaculture course and she used our garden as an example and gave a lot of suggestions one of which was to build a hugel bed which this is it's a raised <laughs> bed with a, a lot of uh, rotting wood and whatnot underneath to actually retain the war water moisture and we it's doing well i mean this they're going to seed now but a, a lot of the greens we've been eating from here and chives we tend to let things go to to flower because again that's where the wildlife uh, appreciate it we're not too fussy about cutting deadheading at all going down further you're, got you're, you're passing i'll just interrupt say you're passing a family tree a wedding present of three different types of apple which oh, we love having fruit trees and uh, it's amazing what you can fit in just about <laughs> even these you can eat little little bits of um, Jack in the Hedge, the, the seeds are quite mustardy and are quite a nice sort of uh, addition to lots, the flavouring. Lots of little... And that's marjoram. Marjoram. And uh, I'm not sure if it's winter or summer savoury. But things come up that we don't plant. Uh, this is love in the mist here, but we think, well, that's fine. It's found its own way. Mm. Lovely pear trees there that are just starting to, to uh, grow. Uh, conference pair but the hollyhocks tend to grow where they feel like it sometimes yes. we have to cut them down and say oh it's not appropriate but we try to leave what we can another little bed with some garlic we're trying the um the jumbo garlic for the first time but i believe it's not garlic it's a leek so i may well return to the real garlic we'll see. and this is the cel celery um Yes, it, it's perennial celery um, from Culberry Nursery, um, which is quite a strong flavour, So, it, and it's nice to just add to soups or uh, just add a little bit of celery flavour. The red pampion is a very good wildlife plant for bees and moths, so we encourage that. And so is the, the butterfly, butterfly bush, the buddleia. We've got a, an ordinary one and a white one there. Anything that looks nice we don't try not to throw away so that's an old cherry tree that's now a little symbol of longevity. Yeah. Mm. Well you might be interested we were a bit shocked to discover uh, the death well perhaps not quite died um, our little box bushes which we got more than many years ago um, apparently there is some sort of box blight going around um, and these things are more common because of um, um, the instability of the climate and the, the warming and the humidity um, encourages more things like our pandemic that we're just coming out of, we hope. There's our latest little raised bed with a bee buzzing around the, the chives there and uh, parsley and onions. Uh, and we also have things from neighbours. Neighbours chuck out things. Some, some neighbours <laughs> chuck out this bit of rhubarb. rhubarb they chucked out <laughs> this which is a, a bit of chard bit charred. <laughs> so we, oh we'll give it a, another lease of life which we do <laughs> and even things that aren't doing very well the quinces which we had a bit die back but they're still there and it'll come again and the, the red flowers are, are lovely neighbours have got a lovely 
rose bush there, but it's single roses, and single roses are so good for butterflies and, and moths and bees. Uh, anything, anything that's single, we encourage. And the pantry's got clematis because I, I wanted the clematis, and I thought, where on earth can I put it? So I'm hoping the plum will be happy enough to have clematis growing round it. I thought we've got a basket of plums in the middle of a basket of uh, a clematis basket. <laughs> Hopefully not too shade, shady for it. And, and that has gone to seed so I can collect the, um, the seeds of landcress and have more landcress like in the bare patches there, which is lovely in salads and again flavouring because it's quite strong. Sorry. Um, Water is so beneficial to wildlife that we try to have as much water as we can. This little pond here, which we lay, well, we tend to lay them so we know what we're talking about when we're talking to each other. It's called the Marsh Pond, and it's an old wheel, wheelbarrow top. <laughs> <laughs> and then next to it, we've got a, a bog area, and we've got again another little clay um, dish, bird bath, whatever you call it. And beyond that, we've got the raspberries just flowering and coming and then the honeysuckle behind that all very good wildlife plants and then we've got the uh, ivy here over the arch which we'll soon be trimming um, we, we work in with the holly blue butterflies that uh, lay their eggs on this ivy over in, in, in August and they wait until we see the holly blues actually flying before we start trimming the ivy and we know that they've now they've come out of their chrysalis and the next time they'll go on the on the holly so we won't cut the holly until they've come out in the august september i'm hoping to discover um i couldn't resist a sort of little like bedding plant uranium and i'm i've tried uh, digging up wee bits of comfrey which flowers for ages and i'm hoping that that might be a more appropriate plant um, but I noticed the heat, this, this, um, this spring heat has uh, it's succumbed rather. But anyway, it should come back from its roots and I'll see how that goes. The uh, silver birch, wonderful trees for wildlife, birds and everything else as well. Uh, because they do... Uh, support a lot of insects and we planted those what 20 years ago from uh, Ferring Country Fair three little ones very chatty in fact one we paid a little bit for one we had almost for nothing because it was poor shape and, and the other one he chucked in he said it won't survive but you can have it and they all three of them <laughs> with a bit of love and care we try to love everything that we've got uh, that has survived On this side we've got a downy birch, which is supposed to like it a bit wetter. So hopefully with the ups and downs of the climate something will survive, mm. one or the other. We've got a hedgehog here, <laughs> try to encourage the real hedgehogs to come in, but it's made of metal, again a fair trade project from Africa using recycled uh, steel. Mm. We've got this a wee shower tray over there with water in too. With a frog in it. Okay. It's only a stone frog, but it does encourage the others, <laughs> the real ones. We have. <laughs> we tried to reuse everything. Again, these things were chucked out by neighbours. The pots and the hangers and the flowers. And we've reused them. And an old uh, roller here that we used to support them. We try planting wildflower seeds. We cleared all this last year and put lots of seeds in, but we find it quite difficult. The old grasses tend to come back. We don't want the same again, but the, the white dead nettle is wonderful wildlife plant for, for bees and, and other insects, so we tend to let it grow. And some people think it's a sting nettle, but it doesn't sting at all. It's not even the same family. And it does last very well in a vase. 
the flowers last quite a long time. And then I couldn't resist the, um, the, oh no, I've gone and forgotten the name, <laughs> um, the Aram with its, its Lords and ladies unusual or... flower, the spark spade, that's it, Lords and Ladies, mm. and the lovely story of how it shuts up um, when it's, when the bud, it, it, it manages to trap several There it is, there's them. its sexual organs, oh sorry about that, <laughs> but... <laughs> 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 it, the the, the fertil is be fertilised by little tiny midges and it, it needs about a thousand in there crawling all over apparently. The story of it is amazing how it shuts them up but then it lets them out later when it knows <laughs> it can tell the job has been done. This is very useful. Oh, no, you're not a boy are you? So don't, don't, don't get stick on me. Boys love goose grass or cleavers. It's a very good year for it. But uh, again, very good for wildlife and for eating. Uh, we've got a friend who actually um, liquidises it and drinks it because it's uh, very good for heart as a heart tonic. But we, we just cut it off and, and boil it. So many things you can boil as a vegetable that are, are wild. And the... and the smell is a bit like cut grass. Mm. It's one of my favourite smells. So a so we sprig go... in your drinking, drinking water bottle is nice. So we go foraging in our own garden, basically, things for, for lunch. The um, Chinese pine is a bit um, oriental for this garden, but Mary loves things Chinese, so I found this uh, being sold in aid of the uh, um, what, the World Fund for Wild is it Wildlife. No, I've got I've forgotten what it's called. Um, tree what, Tree Foundation, Jesus. International Tree Foundation. I'll get it right in a minute. So I bought that as a as a weenie pot plant quite a few years ago. <laughs> but it would like to be about 120 foot, so I'm afraid it's not and it's not very happy this year. This was my idea of a bit of artwork. They, they were both actually on, on the same one. Um, swings with cups and saucers and bird food on. <laughs> mm -hmm. Our nettle patch, this is what we only nettles we had in the garden until we bought the land outside. But we, we used that for Nettle soup and other uh, delicacies. Mm. Hawthorn trees tend to plant themselves wherever they feel like. There's a little one there, and we, sometime we will dig it up and then put it in a in a much more suitable place. Mm. We we felt that this this is the sunniest spot of the garden. Um, it was bramble and honeysuckle and, and a clematis, which has since, we don't think it's going to come back, it's died. Um, and we thought, we read quite a few books by uh, John Staple Lewis, I think his name is. Um, and he was, he was talking about wildlife gardens. And we thought we ought to make it more friendly. So we've introduced holly, um, alternating with pyrocanther and variegated hebe, all, all evergreens, um, but then <laughs> we, we're going to have to do some very careful care for the young hebes because they're very dry and not very happy. Um, and then we've had a rose that we've had for years anyway. But, oh, and we've got one gilder rose at the end of the row. So this is our little mini hedge, which, which we hope. Which is beautiful at the moment with the, with the blossom. Yes. Oh, and pri privet, wild privet, because that melds it all in one and scrambles through everything and brings it all together to make make a small solid hedge for the birds. This is our love and hate plant, the three-cornered <laughs> leek. Very good for wildlife, but it's very invasive, so yeah, we have to um, do quite a bit of weeding out of it. I don't like that word, but we have to. But we eat it as well. I mean, it's, it, we can cook, cook it, we can eat it raw. And, and the bulbs at the bottom, everything is edible. I'm actually foraging for lunch at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> That's dandelion with it, you've got. <laughs> and here's what we call the frog hole. It's a wee, a wee, wee pond, and it's made from the base, turned upside down, the base of, was it a um, water bottle? Water bottle, yeah. Yes. I don't there's anything. Oh, there's a frog in there. Oh, there he goes. Um, and we have to sort of clean it out. I don't think the frogs like too much uh, um, weed on it, so we tend to sort of clear it out so they can see a bit of water. Can you? Yeah, it's gone now. But 
We oh. also sadly have to put, I try and think of um, protecting areas from the cats because so often what is appropriate for wildlife and makes for easy access to the water also encourages the cats to sit there and wait till the frog pops up and then you find a dead frog on the path not being eaten so not sort of served a, a function for wildlife but just being played with by the cat not our cat <laughs> but there are a lot around and we still got the honeysuckle full of, full of blossoms and this is our lovely Egremont russet apple tree which uh because I love climbing, I love picking the apples in, in the autumn. And uh, we've got a lovely rose that climbs up it as well. It's a yellow rose. It's a lovely um, alternative colour for it. <laughs> we can get down as easy as we went up. <laughs> Another bike rail at the bottom. Because we've got access at the back of the garden, so you've almost reached the end of the garden now. Oh, there's there's plenty more water though. Um, yeah. So that was a, a find last year. Somebody had put an empty pond shell um, out in their front garden, saying, "Please take." Um, so we've, we've, Richard's done a lot of work to get that in there. And before that, many years ago. Um, Created a um, with a butyl liner a pond, so that and one they feed from the water butts from the house from the uh, rain of the roof all the way down this hedge line under this bridge and into this pond and then down to the next one. So when we do have rain, hopefully that that serves the ponds nicely. We got the comfrey there. Again, comfrey is always full of bees, uh, and, and a little bit of white nettle. We'll have to sort of try and weed some of that out. I think otherwise it could take over. But uh, and the cherry tree that uh, the birds seem to think they want them before they're ripe, which is a shame. But <laughs> we're quite happy to let the birds have them. Which would be nice if they left us a few, but they don't always. We do have other trees, we've got a, a, a lovely uh, gauge, gauge tree gauge there. Tree. Yeah. We've got gooseberries, black currants, bushes, and tansy, which we have to keep down because tansy is very aggressive, but it's a lovely smell and uh, lovely yellow flowers come out. And you can eat a little bit of it in, if, in, in a herb salad. I believe it might be a strewing herb, and, and this too might be. This is um, Artemisia, um, which is a little bit acrid sort of smell as well. Yes, but when we get trouble with slugs and snails, we use several things. We've got uh, lots of eggshells, we put comfrey leaves down uh, and, and the tansy, anything to sort of stop them, either stop them going over because they don't like going over the surface, or they think, hmm, this is nice to eat, I don't need to go any further. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We tend to let things run to seed quite often. We don't use it, which is fine. You know, well, a cabbage family or some sort. Because <laughs> yeah. uh. this, this really, officially, is the veg veg. <laughs> so we've got chard, good King Henry. That's, that, um, that, this is the, um, like an ever-larging, lasting cabbage. Very, very good for you. There it is starting to go to flower. But we, we actually managed to sort of... Uh, use quite a lot of that in our cooking quite an old old established plant and it just keeps coming and growing there's no problem with it we also mm. eat the um ground elder there, there's a patch further back in the garden which is just very invasive but um so that's one way of helping to keep it down we, we, we put that in stews and soups and things our old shed here was here when we bought the house. It was then being used as a chicken coop, uh, but it, so it's well insulated and it's still going fairly strong. And Mary loved the tiles that were on originally on these houses. So when people chucked them away, we quite recently had them stored. We've managed to put 
put them just as a bit of a decoration on the actual roof. They're such an uplifting colour and in the rain too they seem to glow. They're lovely. <laughs> they seem to stay there, which is good. This is where we keep all our sticks for use. We know where to come if we want anything for stakes. Someone was chucking out a bit of lead as well. I mean, that might come in use for one day. So it's there. A little ingenious system of keeping the door back. And it works. <laughs> <laughs> So it's a bike shed, pot, not quite a potting shed, bike shed, um, garden equipment and things like that. Yeah. Well, I think our, um, uh, succumbed to the drought and the heat. Oh, well, that'll come up again. We'll give it some water. It'll yes. bounce back up. Yes, that was um, Red Campion. Sweet Sicily here, which again is lovely. Uh, the flowers and the seeds, heads and the leaves. Sort of licorice flavour and an aniseed flavour and you can add it to fruit, fruit salads and these and it it's, helps sweeten it. Yeah, cut the rhubarb with this, you don't need sugar, it's lovely. Mm. This is our little circle here, again <laughs> we've let it go a bit it was, wild. It was grass, yeah. it was a, we, we do like circle dancing and, and the area that we can manage to circle dance is shrinking and shrinking but this is no the end we've just had the end of no mo may and uh, this is very much showing the signs of um, the grass disappearing and other things arriving this is uh, a lovely alder hedge it was originally i think but quite, quite a lot of alder trees some of them are very old and but they all seem to be sprouting new so it, it, lovely to have and then we've got holly there as well, different types of holly, uh, which are burying quite well this year. Mm. Cow parsley is coming in. It started in the, what we call a forest out there, but it's come indoors <laughs> in our garden. But again, cow parsley, an early plant, very good for wildlife and also good for us as well, both raw and cooked. But you've mm. got to be very sure you know what cow parsley is, because it can be muddled with poisonous ones. <laughs> this is the end of our garden and you've got the alleyway here where the dustmen used to come and collect the bins from but this land beyond we bought from a developer in 2008 and have kept it as far as we can as a wildlife retreat and we've our house was actually named Rose Dean when it was actually built in 1930 so we've got the name up and we've called this the forest of Rose Dean. The old original name of or, or meaning of forest was sort of unused land so we thought it was quite appropriate. So let's go into the forest of Rose Dean. Past the compost bins that we use so much of, both made ones there and plastic ones over there. Mm. When we bought the land, the main trees here were elms and they promptly died of the Dutch elm disease. But the roots didn't die and the new suckers came up and now our elm trees are sort of 20, 30 foot high again and haven't succumbed yet, which is, which is good. But we have done a lot of other planting as well. We've got a bay tree here which uh, is lovely for climbing up the middle, uh, mm. for nesting. <laughs> and for winter retreats for birds and we've got plenty of nettles here and we keep most of them They're all over the place there's a wee fox shelter i don't think we'll be able to see it but just a, a little roofed shelter which we hope is 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 helping things that don't find the extremes of weather difficult made from a, a table <laughs> and uh, a roofing is the size of an old shed and then covered with tiles to look like a homely residence for some fox. <laughs> we love honesty, uh, so do the wildlife 
and uh, the little uh, seeds that come afterwards are lovely as well. And they're only biennial, but they're growing there. They all flower next year. Yes. <laughs> Any little corner we try to put seeds in. These are seeds that are collected locally by a friend of ours from uh, um, a, a garden of Cortis Avenue Wildlife Garden. These were from. We're good on bug houses. This again, underneath there's a table that actually marks North Lansing WI. <laughs> Well, it was um, the end of North Lansing, yeah, WI, so wasn't it, when it's, they disbanded? It's okay. sort of a storage for wood we might use, but in the meantime, it's, uh, it's a good bug house. So this, this path here actually links the two roads, and with permission, we do allow labourers to use it as a, as a way through. Mm. Mm. Bindweed is another love-hate plant. <laughs> um, we try to keep it in quite a lot of places because again, it's a lovely wildlife friendly plant and looks beautiful when the flowers come out. Uh, but we still have to cut down quite a bit, otherwise nothing else would grow. This is another example of woven sweet chestnut fencing done by Karen and Jim Kelsey of Bulba, they call themselves Woven in the World, and uh, they grow and coppice their own woodland for this. So it's a very environmentally friendly way of producing fences. Apparently banks in sunlight is very good for wildlife, so we try to have a bank here with new uh, trees, little trees um, at the top. We try to name every part so that again we, when we're referring to them we know what we're talking about but it's, it's a lovely idea I think to uh, ha and, and they tend to reflect the trees that are there. So. We also noticed over the years how um, um, starlings decimate the grapes on a grapevine if you happen to have one outdoors. So we thought, why not have it as a, a lovely autumn coloured feature and for the wildlife? So we've got a grapevine which is about two foot. It's in second year now, but uh, we're not quite sure which way it's going to go yet, but that will be for the wildlife. This is what we call our ward meadow. We try to grow meadow plants in, or they grow themselves. So we've got uh, corn cockles coming up here, amongst other other things. What's that one there, Mary? Oh, yeah. um, it's a whorehound. I'm not sure if it's the black or the white whorehound. And there's a little pond down there. Just very tiny. <laughs> But it's got frogs in it's it. It's got about six frogs in it. If you can see them, their heads sticking up. Mm. Well, we've actually been given another larger uh, plastic pond liner by a neighbour. So this winter we're going to enlarge that with a bigger one in as well. We've also got um, a um, an apple tree here, which was grown from a pit, just discarded. Um, in um, Richard's mum's garden, so we, we trans transferred it here and uh, we've called it Doctor's Delight because it's supposed to keep the doctor away, isn't it? Because we get healthier stops him, for you. Stops him having so much overtime there. <laughs> <laughs> An apple a day keeps the doctor, doctor away, that's it, that's where I was thinking of it. <laughs> the, the sign, it, 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 I just found this like this and I thought, that's a signal. So. We, we've put on it, proceed with caution. Someone tells me it's spelt wrong, but that's the old English way of spelling proceed. <laughs> um, so Richard is um, mm. very, he used to be a train spotter. 
So that's, that's, it's a railway. And that's what that signal with, a, with the caution down and, the, and the, the stop signal up does actually mean in railway parlance. Which is very caution. appropriate for this. <laughs> <laughs> Uneven everywhere. Mm. Mm. We've got gorse, which also we felt was a very important wildlife addition. And it's, um, it's supposed to be in bloom an enormous amount, isn't it? Yes. All, round, all year round, if you're lucky. And yes. the nettles are lovely in bloom as well. They are the flowering. And also we've got cairns. Any stones we find we don't want, we put on the two cairns. We tend to dedicating, dedicate them to the, the lost species and the, and the more that's happening all the time to remind us of what we're trying to do to, uh, to, to stop it. When we bought the land, it was fly tipped a lot. I mainly builders' rubbish, and uh, a lot of metal work we managed to recycle. Uh, and the stones and the bricks we used to build walls, dry, dry walls, with. And uh, we've seen one or two uh, slow worms and lizards around, so we know they're they're here. Our um, lovely building there in the corner is what we call the retreat and that was made all from chucked out stuff from neighbours even the, the roof and the windows uh, we don't like plastic so the guttering was new but it's um, still still guttering quite expensive but it, it's better for uh, uh, doesn't it's not a, um, a carbon resource i mean it takes a lot of carbon to, to actually make it so it's always a bit more Again, into rainwater butts, and we feed the little ponds here. Cranby cordifolia. <laughs> um, I can remember the name of this one, and it flowers every two or three years. And this has got a flower spike now, and will come out might even grow another two feet and lovely yellow flowers on it. Mm. We've got roses. Um, see what we've got. This is a, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a Dortmund rose. That was a cutting. So it's growing on its own roots and it's perfectly caved. It's only been there um, about a year and a half, I think. But it, it, will, it can just travel to the top of the tree. So in a way, it's there to say um, that wild can be beautiful, and we hope for the neighbours. It's single, so it's good for the insects. And I just think of it as a way of protection, really, protecting the trees by growing roses around them. So there's another one in the forest at the foot of the oak tree. We've got an oak in there which... Um, is right in the centre of the land and we call that the heart of oak. Is that, is that, that's what we've got the little notice on. But at the moment it's, uh, it's, it's, it's one of a group of four. We've lost one oak. Um, and we have to just sort of keep an eye to make sure because we've got really too many trees we can't resist putting them in. And somehow or other They've all got to survive together, um, but but th that particular oak seems to be um, doing well, and we know that that is actually another one of the very best trees for wildlife. The number of insects that it can support, so we appreciate that. And the rowan next to it, it's just finished flowering uh, and will bury. And beyond that, there's a very old damson that was here way before us. Um, with a, a with bird box that we've put up and and the f most recent addition the pine tree which we advised it would be a good addition to have a pine growing here a scots pine <laughs> a scots pine <laughs> and three of my children are in scotland so it's a link with them so <laughs> and then a neighbor friend came a neighbor friend came in and planted um uh, a couple of um, foxgloves at the base, which is lovely. So that's one is almost fully out. We won't go down there today, but this is a path through the actual woodland, and uh, 
goes past uh, three crab apples that just finished flowering and lots of other different trees we've got the hazel grove in there as well and a great big hedge on the on the left hand side there and uh, it's all rather lovely with the sun just trickling through it again the crab apples we felt they're, they're a bit more decorative than many trees but um, they're also very good for wildlife but hoping that they would make it more attractive to ne for neighbours Robin's oh, back again Robin. mm. <laughs> yeah. mm. <laughs> hello we haven't got anything with this oh you want a drink that's all right then <laughs> and a summer. yellow rose yeah. up, mm. which uh, <laughs> is just be uh, soon to bloom that's another one on its own roots not as vigorous as the Dortmund but um, single for the single petal for the wildlife. Not only wildlife but human life. We do encourage friends and neighbours to come and just immerse themselves in nature here. We've got lots of little seats all around in the forest that they can just be quiet in and uh, that's our hope for the future that uh, we might even make it into a trust so it outlives us for, uh, for future generations. That, and our last <laughs> big item that we had last December was what we call a lich gate. Mary's always wanted a lich gate. I love lich gates. And I thought, what excuse on earth have I got for having a lich gate? And then I thought, well, the roof will offer more habitats. And dear Jim and Linda Kelsey, woven in the wheel, designed it for us with a selection of different types of nesting areas in there. So this is its first year. So far we haven't had any um, takers, but it takes a while, I think, for these things to catch on. So, so that is our entrance exit to the, um, the road beyond. And we've got the pineapple on the, on the gate post, which is supposed <laughs> to be a good welcome for people. So we have actually done very well with our reduction of carbon emissions. In fact, our house is actually carbon ne negative. We actually export to the electrical grid more uh, than we actually use, which is quite, a, quite an achievement. Um, our electricity, for those who like figures, has been cut to 800 kilowatt hours per year and the gas to 1200 kilowatt hours per year. Uh, it costs us £230 for electricity and £160 for gas and most of that is standing charges. We also try to have a lifestyle that is good for the environment and good for people. Uh, we tend to buy locally, definitely organic food when, when we can, uh, support independent retailers and if we have to buy from abroad, it has to be fair trade. And you can see that I'm actually <laughs> <laughs> promoting it, even in my clothes. In fact, our clothes are, I think, all fair trade that we're both, both wearing. No, no, no. Uh, mine, uh, mine's because, charity. Oh, you want, one's I charity. <laughs> oh, that's right. Sorry, yes. So. <laughs> it's a mix of things. Mix, yeah. Charity shops. Because, so. uh, um, <laughs> again, fair trade, all the producers abroad are suffering greatly from climate change but the people that are doing fair trade are, are doing the best they're actually still uh, conserving the wildlife over there and uh, we need to support them our other lifestyles is um, our transport we don't have a car we use legs cycles buses and trains to places and we try to use natural materials for cleaning uh, and other things. And our whole garden is, doesn't have a chemical near it other than that produced by nature. We have a wild garden. We've actually just done no mow May, so grasses are very long at the moment. We can look at the garden in a minute, but we've got lots of water around and lots of dandelions <laughs> uh, and 
as promoted uh, by what is it, Sussex or Wildlife Trust. Trust. I must have plant. <laughs> We use an Apollo GEM energy management system which is connected to the solar panels in the roof space and will automatically switch on the immersion heater for the hot water tank when we've got surplus solar electricity being generated. And we find that mostly that, that is sufficient and we don't need any other heating of the water.